The reason I like it better than, like, say, the Sun Gold is it tends to be less uh, splitty. It's just crazy ideas that some people come up with, trench planting and all that kind of thing. It's nonsense. It doesn't do you any good. It's, it's not going to be advantageous to you at all. The plant's going to do just as good or better just putting it in the ground. Don't plant it deep. You know, when you go to the store and you see a bag of fertilizer, it'll, it'll have the three numbers, the NPK numbers, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. And you want the low number on the nitrogen, you want a higher number on the phosphorus and a higher number on the potassium. So something like a... So the reason you're advocating doing that starting in, in a controlled environment like that is because you can actually make a more robust stem or robust plant. It's yeah. stockier and it's going to end up being less leggy, less weak. Yeah. And Plus it's organic. You can't buy mm -hmm. organic starch usually unless you want yeah. to pay an arm and a leg. Most people plant plants are, that are root bound and they wait way too long. Potassium will give you the fruit size and you want nice large fruit. And uh, of course the phosphorus will give you the nice roots, the big root system to support the plant. So that's very important. Don't overdo the nitrogen. If you don't learn anything else from this video, remember that. Hi everyone, welcome back to our channel where we like to talk about gardening, homesteading and woodworking. This time we're gonna talk about our favorite type of cherry tomato. So uh, we're going to talk about the favorite variety. We're going to talk about why we like the, that cherry tomato. We are, we're going to talk about the soil conditions, sun, shade, watering, planting, and harvesting, and that kind of thing. So what's your favorite kind of cherry tomato? The favorite kind that I've grown for years now is called sweet orange. Yeah. Or orange sweet. I'm not sure how it's listed on the catalog, but Stokes carries it. I'm not sure who else carries that variety. The reason I like it better than, like, say, the sun gold is it tends to be less uh, splitty. You know, you get a little bit of rain or a little bit of moisture on it or dew. It doesn't split quite as bad. It's no, still, no, no. Just you're splitting, you mean the fruit, the tomato at the top where the stem goes to the tomato. Yeah, it just it, cracks. It would crack open. Yeah. That's what he means, not, not the vine. Yeah. And so it, it still has cracks, but it's not uh, as bad as some of them. So, but and it's super sweet. Super sweet. Very they're vigorous. They're so good. They're like all cherry tomatoes, pretty much very vigorous. They just can take over your garden if you're not pruning them. It's a high producer, high, a lot of yield. Yeah. Um, but it's so sweet. It's like candy for tomatoes. I mean, yeah. it's, it's you, can't, you can't beat it. And uh, What color is it? It's an orange color. It's an orange color, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And uh, it's, unfortunately, it's not a, a open pollinated. It's a hybrid, so you kind of have to buy seed for it. Yeah, I have saved seed, and it's bred pretty true, but it's not quite as good as the hybrid. Mm -hmm. I start all my tomatoes inside um, around 1st of March, so it's coming up here pretty quick. Uh, we'll be starting all the tomatoes and peppers, you know, cauliflower, cabbage, broccoli, all those things to be started inside mm -hmm. around the 1st of March. And I plant by the moon signs, and so there's a particular day that I'll plant by, but I right around the 1st of March. Mm -hmm. And I'll just make a, make my own potting uh, seed starting mix and we'll be doing a video on that, uh, yep. how to make really good seed starting mix. Yeah, Lord willing. And uh, put them in, I just use little pony packs, buy them by the hundreds and uh, fill them up with a potting mix, a seed starting mix and mm -hmm. make a little dent in the top and put the seed there and cover them with a little vermiculite and water them in, get them wet and put them under the dome, a little clear dome on a 1020 tray and uh, set that on a heat mat and set the temperature for about 78 to 80 degrees. And I'll put the probe, the sensing probe into the one of the cells so you know what the <laughs> Sorry. temperature of the soil is <laughs> so Excuse you don't me. get it too hot, too cold. And that'll maintain the temperature just right. And of course, the dome keeps the humidity in there. And uh, and a good a good setup, they'll germinate and start coming out of the soil in about three days. Mm -hmm. uh, if everything's ideal, if you got everything dialed in pretty good. Uh, but being that maybe you haven't had as much experience, it may take you a week before this uh, plants start to emerge from the soil. Um, sometimes it even takes longer if your seed is old and kind of losing viability. So Yeah, then you take them out and you transplant them in the garden. What, what are you trying to wait for as far as when to do that yeah, um, outside? First, before you take them out, we got to get them under light. And this is a very critical thing for tomato growers. I see a lot of people on Facebook and other places 
They have these tall, stringy plants that are starved for light. They don't have enough light, and they got these funny little LED lights that you buy at Walmart, and they're trying to grow tomatoes, and it just doesn't work. Or they sit it in front of a window and think that's going to be enough sunlight to make a nice tomato. It's not going to work. You're going to have tall, stringy tomatoes, and they call leggy tomatoes. Um, and they're not good. Uh, you don't want to do that. So once they, as soon as they start to emerge just a little tiny bit above the soil in your little uh, start pony it. packs, you want to get the light on them immediately. Don't wait a day. Just get them on there. And then you'll have your light set on timers so that you have 14 hours of light and eight hours, uh, 16 hours of light, eight hours off of darkness is ideal. And we use LED, LED lights, and we have several different kinds. But a good one that you could use, just so that you know what a good light is, you can, it's a Viper Spectra 1000, and you can get them on Amazon. They're like 70 bucks, um, and they'll cover a two foot by two foot square area, and that'll be plenty of light. And you want to keep those maybe a foot and a half above the plant and set it maybe 75%. And there's a little dial on there to set it either 50, 75, or 100%. So it can dim down to whatever you want. And so you keep that about 75%, and that'll give you a nice stocky seedling. And if, especially if your room is a little cooler, like if you're doing it in the garage or a spare bedroom, that you may keep a little cooler. You want cool air, but you want warm soil. And so with a bright light like that and uh, keeping the temperature, the soil temperature at 78 and the air temperature, oh, 65, 70 is fine. You'll have a nice stocky light uh, plant. If and you're... some people say, well, oh, put a fan on an oscillating fan. You don't need oscillating fans. That's, it, it's not necessary. If you have the right temperature and the right light, you'll have a nice stocky plant. <clears throat> so some in some colder areas, environments where you're starting them, you might need a heat mat underneath, yeah. possibly. Yeah. yeah, I always usually have a heat yeah. mat under it constantly until they're ready to go out in the <clears throat> greenhouse or outside. Then they no longer so, have heat. It sounds like there's obviously some upfront investment if you're going to do that and have lights and the little setup and the little trays and the pony pack things and all that stuff and the heat mat and the timers and things like this. So for those that can't afford that, what would you suggest uh, as far as planting it out in the where it's going to grow in your garden? It's um, pretty, what would you suggest? Um, I wouldn't do it out there and uh, where, where you're going to end up having the tomatoes, the final place where they're going to grow. It's pretty hard to get them to germinate nicely in the grow you can do it but it's a lot better to start your own and you can get by with cheaper lights i mean you can go and get there's other lights you can try your shop lights you can go to costco or wherever and buy a, a cheap shop light and just put it down closer and mm -hmm. uh, it'll it'll do good enough to get you it'll be just as good as what so, you don't buy at Walmart or Home Depot. So the reason that reason you're advocating doing that starting in, in a controlled environment like that is because you can actually make a more robust stem or a robust plant. It's yeah. stockier, and it's going to end up being less leggy, less weak. Yeah. And Plus it's organic. You can't buy mm -hmm. organic starch usually unless you want to yeah. pay an arm and a leg right. for them at the big box stores. Right. And, you know, they've been sitting out in the sun. They haven't been watered right. They've been yeah. stunted. They're root-bound. Uh, that's another thing. Uh, most people plant plants in, that are root bound and they wait way too long. So you want to get your plant out into the garden when they're about four inches tall, no no bigger. And otherwise you're going to be uh, hurt by having their roots constrained in that little tiny pony, pony back. back. Yeah. And so just get them out. Don't, you're not going to get ahead by wait and you grow this big plant and think you got a big, nice, healthy plant, you're going to put that out in the garden. It's just going to sit there when you transplant it. And it's not going to do as good as planting them when they're small Yeah. and getting them out early. Getting that root system yeah, growing into the soil. Yeah, root system going. It's not mm -hmm. restricted in any way. And when you transplant them, you know, you want to get some mycorrhizae uh, powder or granules. And when you take the plant out of the little pony pack or whatever kind of pot you're growing it in, Turn it upside down, sprinkle a little bit of this mycorrhizae right on the roots, and then put it in the ground. Mm -hmm. And another old wives' tale 
I get a kick out of a lot of the wives tell you get on Facebook and all these crazy nothing ideas. nothing against wives it's just these stories yeah, it's just crazy ideas some people come up with trench planting and all that kind of thing it's nonsense it doesn't do you any good it's, it's not going to be advantageous to you at all the plant's going to do just as good or better just putting it in the ground don't plant it deep and just put it in the ground you plant it deep and the roots are way down deep and it's cold down there and you're just you're just doing yourself a a disfavor. That's what you're talking about for the that wives' tale, if you want yeah, to call it. That's just an old yeah. wives' tale. Plant them deep, you know. They yeah. dig a big yeah. hole and plant clear, plant clear down the where just the top leaves of the tomatoes are sticking out of the ground. That don't do that because the, the roots are clear down deep. It's cold down there. They're not going to grow until the soil warms up way later in the spring. Or trench planting, it, you're not. It just doesn't work. Just don't do that. Just get the plants out when they're three to four inches tall, and you'll be far better off. Yeah. And so as far as what kind of soil is ideal, as far as also NPK mixes and that kind of ratios? Uh, sandy loam yeah. is good for everything. That's what we have here. And the more organic the matter better. that you have in there, the better. Compost, of course, we do. Multi. If you've seen any of our other videos, we do no-till. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no tillage at all. Um, and use compost. Homemade compost is the best. But if you have to buy it, Find try find some organic and good maybe dairy based compost. Sometimes it's pretty good, um, but yeah, nice rich soil, but not overly rich in nitrogen. Mm -hmm. Most growers uh, mess up on the nitrogen. They put way too much, and you have a big beautiful plant with no fruit. Nice and, and green and lots of leaves and yeah. stems, but and they think, well, how come the tomatoes never turn red? The fall's coming and there's still all these green tomatoes on the plant. Well. They, you had way too much nitrogen in the soil to get the fruit, the blossom to take, and you end up with just a big plant until later in the year where the, some of that nitrogen gets used up, and then the plants are, the fall's coming and you, you don't have ripe tomatoes, so you want to get them. Nitrogen usually is in the form of like manures yeah. a lot of times. Yeah. Especially chicken manure is very hot and pigeon manure and other kinds of And you'll of see, you know, when you go to the store and you see a bag of fertilizer, it'll have the three numbers, the NPK numbers, nitrogen, phosph phosphorus, and potassium. And you want the low number from the nitrogen, you want a higher number on the phosphorus and a higher number on the potassium. So something like a four nitrogen or even less, and maybe an eight or 10 on the phosphorus or another eight or 10 on the potassium is a good good number for growing tomatoes because the high potassium will give you the fruit size and you want nice large fruit and uh, of course the phosphorus will give you the nice roots the big root system to support the plant so that's very important don't overdo the nitrogen if you don't learn anything else from this video remember that don't do the nitrogen too high mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this, this video's went from their favorite cherry tomato kind of a, how to grow tomatoes the best way. So anyways, I hope that's a lot of uh, helpful information for you. We're going to also um, talk about the trellis system. And, and there's one that we did on gardening, like a garden uh, fall garden walkthrough, I think. And I think in that one, if I remember correctly, we showed the strings and we showed the tomato clips and that kind of thing. So if you go back and find that, to show you what we like to do for yeah. for trellising. So, um, uh, it's of course full shade, full sun. Um, the trellis system we put them in more of a V kind of orientation. Yeah, and we use a shade cloth on that in the hottest part of the summer. Um, but cherry tomatoes, you really don't have to worry. They're not going to get sun scald hardly ever, so you don't really need to mess with the shade cloth if you don't want to. What what about a lot of people like to use a little cheap little ch uh, cherry uh, t tomato cages, the little small ones. Yeah, it doesn't What's, work. They just they just grow up so fast and overflow and yeah, fall the whole over. Thing falls over. It's just a big mess. And so if you can't do the um, string uh, trellises method, what's another method you'd recommend? Oh, uh, you could use a, a stock panel. You know, put a stock panel section up, and you could clip it to the stock panel. Uh, some people do the stock panel and just make a big arch, mm -hmm. plant tomatoes along the side, and they grow up on that. That works fine. Mm -hmm. uh, there's all kinds of different options you can get. But just don't buy, don't buy those little cheap tomato cages. Mm -hmm. You can get uh, uh, concrete reinforcement wire, six inch mesh. Uh, you can buy that at the big box stores and you just take a section of it and wrap it around and make about a foot and a half or so 
diameter circle, and that'd be five feet tall. Mm -hmm. And then put that, set that there on, in, over the tomato, and then put like one uh, steel T-post and wire it to it so the wind doesn't blow it over. Yeah. Uh, and that makes a, a decent cage. I don't like the cage method at all. They're a pain um, to store. <laughs> yeah, it's hard. And they're hard to get the fruit out of. Yeah, and we've hard done to keep it. everything pruned, and it just yeah. gets to be a, a jumbled mess in there. Yeah, we've, we we did that method for years. But um, another question as far as um, harvesting, storing them, uh, you got to obviously harvest your tomatoes before it frosts. As far as storing them, you can just store them in a cold and dark environment, a cool environment. Yeah, and they'll store only for so long. Yeah, it, they're not storage tomatoes. There are varieties from that I've gotten from Spain uh, over there that they store for six to eight months in a cool area. And I haven't tried those yet. I've got the seeds. I just haven't had time or the energy to do it. So, But there are varieties out there that will store for six or eight months in the right environment. Uh, they might taste kind of like a tomato. But anyway, we'll find <laughs> out. Maybe we'll have another video on that yeah. if we, if we yeah, figure it out. Yeah, that would be fun. So. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video on the, the, our favorite cherry tomatoes. Do you have anything else to add? I think that's about it. We don't uh, do any fungicides or insecticides or herbicides or anything with our tomatoes. Mm -hmm. um, so if you got good biology in your ground, you, you shouldn't have any problem. I was going to add uh, watering. We usually do drip tape uh, watering for those, and then they're heavily mulched more on the roots. Yeah, the drip so. tape works fine. I usually run a drip tape on either side of them at least, at least two drip lines, and sometimes three. I put one right down the row of tomatoes and then one out about a foot on either side so that they're well watered because they do have a very large root system and you need to keep it wet. I, sh I should have asked you, and well, I'll ask you now, what's your spacing along the drip tape? What do you like to do uh, for cherry tomatoes? On, on my trellis system, we do it about every 16 inches along the tape space the plants every 16 inches. Mm -hmm. uh, if you don't have a trellis system, you need to space them out uh, a fair that. amount further than that. But being the trellis, we can get a lot of tomatoes in a very small area. At least a foot and a half if you have, obviously, if you're doing the round wire cages, you're gonna have to put them at least a foot and a half apart. And you got enough room to get between but, them. If, if you can, make a trellis system so you can yeah. utilize the space a lot better. I hope you guys all enjoyed that video. We highly recommend this kind of tomato, and if you enjoyed that, leave us a comment down below. We read it, and we'll reply to you if you have any questions. Remember, subscribe, please. That really helps us to grow the channel and bring you more content. And uh, remember, God, God is, is light, light, and God, God is love. love.